Hello, gentles and ladymen. I'm Uan Gaming. I'm joined by Palatipus Slayer. Hello. Hey, there. how's it going? Uh, not bad. And it has actually been a long time since we played the game together, but we're constantly chatting because you're you're now a, a Discord mod in the Discord server. And uh, uh, what the hell? You guys just the the dev team just released this patch without telling anybody about it, and like without doing a pup. They're taking away content. I wanted to do a pup video and then do an update video. <laughs> right? Yeah, they literally just like they new patch drop suckers. We, we uh, were you know, not uh, expecting to get this update for another week. Nope. Uh, it, not even necessarily an update. We thought we would just have news on one. Um, what's his name? Cuspot, who is like one of the people uh, who does a lot of the PR. He just rolled through the Discord and was like, bam, suckers. New meta, <laughs> new game. Let's go. And maybe there will still be some stuff announced on the 25th. I'll, 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 I'll of course, cover anything that happens. Uh, event, announcement wise at the 25th. But uh, for now, let's, let's play. This is the uh, 25th anniversary update. Uh, for Age of Empires 3 DE. It's a big one, guys, so, uh, you know, get some water, sit down. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a long Where? video. Uh, this time we're celebrating the 25th anniversary, we have a fun event in store. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what we figured. New anniversary event with profile icons, hero customizations, uh, official mods, new cheats. I love the, the, the new cheats. I love it when they add new cheats, it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. Tons of balance changes to water balance, outlaws and mercenaries. Ooh, that'll be interesting. And standard units. Uh, so they're, wow, native and mercenary. They they're changing everything. Got it. I'm I'm not even gonna uh, check all of this out. Okay. Oh, six new special maps. I've actually taken a huge interest in maps now that I've started map overview as a series. And and if you go up to one of the most requested features deck, deck renaming. renaming and hero name randomizer whoa that's super cool oh yeah, my god that's awesome like, like a, a such a important quality of life change you know what i mean to be able to mm -hmm. change a deck that you've repurposed um oh, at least we oh. got at least we're getting this because we already have all the other quality of life changes when Age of Empires 4 is just like, we finally got the ability to pick our colors. Yeah, we, you know, <laughs> for a smallish game, we we are pretty spoiled and God knows I like to complain uh, about a lot of things. <laughs> but famous truth, for it. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, at the same time, the, the devs, and, and we'll go into it, they've put a lot of effort into this and so... Uh, it's it's exciting. All right. I'm pretty excited. Six new maps. We have Black Forest Arena. That sounds like it could be interesting. And Black Forest Forest Nothing. Oh, cool! They, they introduced Forest Nothing, so you don't have to have a like a custom made map from somebody for it anymore. Awesome. Eurasian Steps Lost. No, no. Why would you take the worst map in the game and make it worse? No. <laughs> Granted, I actually really like the Lost game mode, but, like, fuck Eurasian Steps, man. It's a horrible map. Yeah, yeah. This and is, uh, not the best one they've ever done, but Eurasian you know what? Eurasian Steps Survival. I don't I, I, It looks like there's a new survival game mode as well. I'm not sure what that's all about. Oh, and then they added Lost and Unknown, and Survival for Unknown. Okay, Lost Unknown sounds like it's just begging for a video. Correct. I, I think, too, this survival might be, and I guess we'll find out, the Settler Massacre mod, uh, if you've ever heard of that, I might be not. officially supported, so uh, let's read on, maybe it is. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing in yet another milestone, blah, 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 nobody cares. All right, Build Spotlight, anniversary event, uh, October 25th through November 20th. Okay, so this is a month-long event so that doesn't start for another week. Oh, oh, it's another Capybara logo! They love putting these in, like, every single event, man. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love the Capybara? Dude, there, there's so many Capybara logos now. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Uh, we have Mod Unlock Wololo Priests. Wait, does that make it so that priests say Wololo while they heal? I believe so, yes. That's awesome. That, that's a great mod, and I'm putting it on. Uh, uh, we, we don't know yet. These are all going to unlock a week from today. So yeah, it's, yeah, but it's speculation, of course. Speculation, you know. Mm -hmm. Generally, like, the, 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 the mods that they put on, the, the official mods are, like, 
little cosmetic things that don't really change much, like the cake. I still have the cake mod for, for cannons active, actually. Nice. Uh, cheat unlock. I don't exist. <laughs> I'm wondering what that does. What do, you, what, do, what do you think this does? Do you think it just deletes your TC? It's some sort of stealth, uh, is oh, my first guess. Oh, yeah, like uh, all of your units and buildings get stealth and can move on or something. Okay, profile unlock for Ivan the Terrible. Hero unlock for General Warwick. Do you have any idea who General Warwick is or what civilization that'll be for? Probably Brits. Uh, if I remember correctly, he was in the second act of the first campaign. Uh, I Actually, forget I if he was. Was yeah, he was the bad guy, if I remember correctly. General Warwick. Why did I just get Neil Dixon? That's not General Warwick. Who he's voiced by. Oh, he's a he's a character in Age of Empires. Herp to dirt. You're right. Okay. He's the the bad British guy. I thought it was going to be a character in history. Yeah. Okay. You're totally right. Yeah. That's I, I remember him now. Uh, the Flying Dutchman allows all naval units to move on land. <laughs> this is a classic uh, from Age of Empires one uh, cheat. So this one sounds just hilarious in Age of Empires three with all the cannons and frigates. Tonight we hunt. All maps start in night mode. I wasn't aware that there were day and night cycles in the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. So cool. uh, and hero unlock skin Ichido. Uh, that's also a campaign character, if I'm not mistaken, right? Correct. That's the Japanese uh, main character gotcha. in the Tad campaign. Gotcha. All right, let's get into this though. New cards and units. Uh, so we have French Royal Army for French in Age 2. Enables your Musketeers and Halberdiers to benefit from combat promotions to receive extra oh. hit points and damage for each defeated enemy military unit. 5, this is 15, insane. and 25%. Wait, because uh, aren't the promotions... They're not, they're, they're not additive, they're multiplicative, right? I believe so. They're based on current stats. So this, so... Is, so this gives your units a stat buff that scales throughout the whole game, potentially. That's insane. That's ridiculously good. Yep, it is absolutely great. And, you know, remember, you just wait till you get to France. Um, but okay. long story short, France's musketeers were considered a, a solid option. Nothing special. And, and now you have promoting musketeers. That is just... Also, we completely skipped over this picture here that has a giant birthday cake in the Ottoman flag. Are Ottomans getting a rework today? Uh, rework is probably a humble term for what they have. Uh, <laughs> I will let you discover it piece by piece. Okay, got it. You may now choose German royal houses and ally that will allow you to recruit and upgrade units at the royal embassy. Huh? Uh, you may know the Inca um, native allies yeah. card. Yeah. It's basically this, but now for Germany and with European allies. Oh shit, this is actually part of this card here. I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, Prince Electors, Germany, age one. You can choose a German royal house as an ally that allows you. Oh, okay. That's super cool. Uh, what, are, what are the German. Uh, what are the German allies that they get to pick from exactly? Does, they, does it include, uh, like, Vasa? I think that's the one that. Oh, here it is. Hanover, Habsburg, Olenburg, Wetten, and Wittelbesch. Is. Uh, okay, so. Uh, which one was the OP one that has, like, the, 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 the cav that has everything or whatever? Is that Wetton? I believe so. Wetton, if I remember correctly, is the Saxon cuirassier. Wittelbach um, has some of the... They have the Barbarian Mountain Troopers, the Dutes Do of Doom, and uh, an another one. Uh, Habsburg has the Lion Infantry and the uh, Mountain Infantry. I think Hanover is the one that is... Uh, Black Runewhisker and the Totenkampf. So Oldenburg is uh, so the I guess Danish the, royal house. The big thing I'm curious about is whether or not they can pop big buttons of these natives. I don't believe so from the initial testing. However, so it's not like a trade post, but it, it's just, yeah. again, think of it like the Incan, where you basically have a native embassy. Allied uh, units now cost population in the Royal Embassy in the home city. Okay, so it's full. It, it's not like the native. It, it's not like the Inca natives. It's like the as. It, it's like the the African natives, uh, where you just straight up get trainable access to these units, and they can, they cost population for you now. Correct. 
That means that um, Germans can get an H2 musketeer now. They can, although, you know, again, with them causing population and the fact that Germany is such a tempo sieve, uh, I, I really like this. It's, it's truly a trade-off. It's because such pop a space cool idea is... because now they can finally chill out in H2 and, like, brawl in the musketeers. Correct. Um, and it's going to be the trade-off of the tempo, which they normally are used to with the semi-FF, versus, you know, the utility of all these different natives. I, I, uh, you just I really like there. this kind of okay. for the sieve that's Germany. Uh, I also uh, noticed short, that it's it doesn't actually ship a royal, uh, like a native embassy. You have to hit, build the native embassy yourself and then also pay 100 resources for the alliance. Oh. Okay. Let's see okay. here. Uh, Moogle elephant armors. Ooh, an another, like, elephant buff. I, for anybody who's, like, seen my any of my India play, y'all know I love my elephants. I love just, like, going pure elephants uh, whenever I can. Uh, improves the different resistances of each Indian elephant units, plus the military actors. Card costs 500 coin, 500 wood. Siege elephant, plus 10% range. Flail elephant, ten plus 10% siege. Mahal, plus 10% melee. Howda, plus 10% melee. Okay, so that's... It's age 4. It's 1,000 resources for basically a 10% uh, HP increase. Uh that scales right uh with, with where you're at which is pretty cool um it's not the craziest shipment in the world i really hope that for 1000 resources it also comes with an elephant or two you know this may be more of a treaty thing i know uh in treaty games india is considered underpowered so gotcha. i would assume this card is for them okay gotcha uh, so I, I hope that for a thousand resources it would come with an elephant or two uh so, you know, fingers crossed, I'll see it once once I actually open up the game. Uh, 40, wow, they are just, like, spreading all of these cards just everywhere, aren't they? They're, they're not targeting one civilization in particular just yet. 47 Ronin. If this doesn't actually ship you 47 Ronin, I'm going to be really disappointed. Can you we'll imagine see. if that was a shipment? I, I can, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> All of but, your villagers and shrines turn into masterless samurai guardians. Oh, that's kind of neat. Uh, yeah. Castles are replaced by Woku Ronins. Wonders and town centers are replaced by Ronin mercenaries. Uh, you you very clearly will get way more than 47 samurai <laughs> with this. Exactly. Uh, um, this you, is you lose so, everything. You lose everything. God damn. You lose your castles, your wonders, your town centers, your villagers, and your shrines. Holy shit, you lose everything. This is, yeah, but that's a dangerous push, though. That's a really dangerous push. You know, uh, but the, the Corsair Revolt is dead. Long live the, <laughs> the Samurai Revolt. <laughs> oh, uh, because they're guardians, too. Corsair Revolt's dead, you say. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this. Yes, right. uh... It's crazy. And this is interesting. Sovnia, Russians, age 3. Notably increases the melee damage of cavalry archers. Strelacy. I'm just, I'm just assuming that's just I'm assuming that's just say Strelitz. And Halberdiers. Cavalry archers inflict area damage and melee. They're they're turning them into Yabasume? <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, cavalry, it's... cavalry archer plus 5 melee damage and plus 1 area uh, area damage radius. Strelit plus 10 melee damage. Uh, Hobbitier plus 4 melee damage. Whoa, Strelit's plus 10 melee damage? When you have that many, like, that goes, that makes them go from doing fuck all to, oh my god, that's actually a threat. <laughs> that's exactly true. Because, uh, there are some... if not, I'm not mistaken, their melee multipliers still maintain their, their, like, uh, multipliers against heavy infantry. So this means that, like, you can't just charge musketeers into Strelit's anymore and still win. <laughs> That's exactly it. You know, this really gives Russian troops a little bit of some oomph in the late game, especially cav archers. You know, they already had arguably the best ones with Royal Guard. Mm -hmm. So now their cav archers, which wanted to kind of be in melee, uh, are actually benefited from charging into, like, Karasier. Yeah, so, yeah, they turned cavalry archers into Yabasu. Yeah. Six new maps. I actually am... I'm, I'm the map guy now, so I am going to be looking at these... 
Uh, just uh, not not very much, just like very temporarily. Okay, so the arena game mode. Oh, this is really cool. So everybody has like a protect, uh, two protected hunts, two protected coin mines behind them, and then there's just this pit in the middle that you send your troops into, and it looks like everybody starts with a wall. That's super cool. This is a tried and true, probably one of the most popular map modes in Age of Empires 2, so cool to I'm, see how it ports over. I'm looking forward to trying this out. I really am. Uh, for is nothing. We all know what for is nothing is. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no need to go into depth on that. Uh, Eurasian step lost. Oh my god, the treasures. Yeah, yeah it's your, it's it's a lost map. That's, that's for damn sure. Uh, so yeah, we're not, we're not gonna look too much into that. Survival, okay, play- uh, this is what I'm curious about, the survival game mode. Players spawn into a nearly empty map- oh my god, yeah, it's no kidding. Uh, with only some villagers, a shipment from their home city, and their first town center. Defeating the enemy will require a unique deck and strategy. Okay, so there's no natural resources anywhere on the map, and you, you start with a shipment, basically. Weird. Correct. So weird. Alright, that'll be an interesting one. It, again, this is, if anyone's played Settler Massacre, they may be familiar with this mode. I don't know if it's the exact same, because I haven't tested it yet, but... And then, yeah, they've they've included Lost. This is by no means representative of the actual map, I'm sure. Because, uh, you know, it's unknown. But, yeah. <laughs> Unknown survival. That's the most boring looking map I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's cool though. That's cool. I, I'm definitely going to to check those out on map spot a little bit more. You know. Okay, so fix some crashes. Fix some crashes. Fix some UI stuff. Added a new randomized button. Deck names. Yep. Floating text. Add an auction to hide the display of floating text. Why would you want to take that away? Like, the XP cloud from killing a whole group of enemies is, like, one of the most pleasant things in this game. And also, it's a great UI indicator to indicate whether or not you're winning in a fight or not. True. I've... Uh, yeah, I don't know about that one. I, well, I mean, it's great that the option is there, but, like, I, I would never turn it off. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that one, but, you know, it could be a performance thing, uh, or just a preference. Yeah. Hadn't shown any night lighting, now uses the correct icon. Okay, whatever. Uh, missing bowstring for the Targar Archer unit icon. Sure. Uh, and it sounds like somebody went into a low quality PNG and just did a straight line. Mm -hmm. It's important. <laughs> Improves the readability of whales on many maps through a new icon. Oh, cool. So it's not me having to squint my eyes and spot the gold dots instead of the silver dots. It's like the whale watching business is on its way out. Uh, added colored unit shipment icons to remaining civilizations for improved readability. Oh, some civilizations didn't have colored icon shipment icons yet? Yeah, that's kind of funny. Uh, sun or sunrise and sunset. Cool, 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 cool. Don't care. Like, I'm sure I'm going to use this, but like, I don't need to go into detail on it for this video. <laughs> you know? Uh, gameplay fixes caused a bug that caused the Maltese Grandmaster to occasionally play horse noises when it- What? <laughs> what? <laughs> how have I ne I've played so much Malta, how have I never come across this bug? I'm so sad! You know, yeah, exactly. I wish I could go back in time and then think of all the times <laughs> my guy's been shot or cannonballed or ran over and just been like, hmm. <laughs> I'm so sad! Fixed a bug where unit stands on formation, hockey is overlaid, can that be disabled? Uh, fixed a bug where team housing in the south home city card would not remove some resource costs from certain technologies, okay. Uh, fixed map art to see we would generate maps with less than the print, okay, whatever. Uh, civilization balance, Imperial Age. Home city shipments now arrive 33.33% faster in the Imperial Age. Oh, cool! So they're adding more, uh, more, more incentive to go Imperial because I remember the other one that they added was that Imperial units, Imperial civilizations, just train 10% faster. Yep. So I have a nice little thing yeah, to finish out the game. Yeah, exactly. I like it. You know. Units and buildings. Villagers now inflict three times damage to Japanese shrines, like they do against mountain monsters. Cool, they still do fuck all for siege. 
<laughs> they go from 3 to 9. Ooh. Uh, villagers will no longer use melee attacks against huntable animals. They never did. What are you, what are you talking about? They always ran away so that they could shoot. Um, I don't know. It, sometimes they would still use the kind of the awkward little poof thing. Um, I've never seen it happen. Yeah. I've seen it a few times, but, uh, you know, minor, minor thing. Yeah. I don't think it's a huge difference. Fix all remaining instances of animals receiving area of effect damage. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, are you familiar with the absolute retardedness that was Smoking Mirror in Legacy? Not 100%, no. Okay, so Smoking Mirror is the card that gives the Aztec Explorer lots of movement speed and uh, area of effect on his melee attack. Oh, right. And it used to make it so that the Explorer did damage to everything around him, not just not just enemies. And when I say everything, I mean he would damage the enemies, he would damage himself, he would damage his allies, he would damage coin mines and trees and herds around him. It was really funny. And I'm glad that they changed that. <laughs> as much as I thought it was funny. <laughs> Uh, you know, I assume this also means like cannonballs or, you know, like when a fort nukes a bunch of dudes near a hunt. Mm -hmm. All right. Keytards. Melee resistance reduced to 20% down from 40 to improve counterplay. Okay. Well, that, that shouldn't affect my, um, that shouldn't affect my, my, um, Keytard rush too much unless the enemy just makes a couple gav. Yeah. All right. Target lock, the falling units can now benefit from the feature Cali Archers. Colburn, Colburns couldn't before, really? And yep, it's super rare, but, uh, you know, in Colburn Wars in particular, there's a, an actual Ungers, I think in particular, the pro player is famous for his Colv Micro. Um, this does get rid of that a bit. The Cav Archers and Grenadiers, it, it's just nice, especially versus Kerms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Livestock Pen. Reduced to 150 wood from 200, adjusted build bounty from 30 to 30, corrected from 10. I thought the livestock pen had a t had like 50 or something from its from its. Uh... If I'm not mistaken, the livestock pen cost 200 wood, but it gave you 50 build out, uh, build bounty, so it was super super good for just uh, farming XP because it gave you more XP that, for per wood cost than other buildings. Architect builds yeah. them adjusted accordingly. Okay, whatever. Town centers. The following buildings may no longer be built near enemy town centers. Changed to the same distance as in Treaty. Mountain Monastery, Torps, Shrine, char uh, Tribal Marketplace. These buildings can be placed closer to... Really? Uh, oh, they probably just increased the distance, didn't they? Yeah. This it prevents, you know, not that it, it's ever happened to anyone, um... The Japanese players shrine your back hunts. Oh yeah, okay. See, no they they increase the distance so that they they just increase right. the distance for these in particular so that they can't be like, oh hey, your right. second ever hunt. Fuck you. You need musketeers. Pipeline. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say also, you know, laming with the mountain. Mo it, it just kind of reduces those kind of negative play experiences without, you know. It, changing the play styles of the civs too much. Mm -hmm. Pikemen now gain a 0 0.5 attack range with each direct unit upgrade. Oh, that's cool! So now, when when in, you get to the later ages, you know, the pikemen can attack units over each other, at least the, so that the second row will be able to attack too. That's so nice, actually. Yeah, this one I'm really happy with. I think it's been a long requested thing that, you know, they have these huge spears and yet they attack with the same range as the dog. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I, I actually like highly approve of this because this means that uh, when you get to the later game, your pikemen aren't going to be just fucked by anybody with a range attack, you know? Uh, they still are probably, but um, they're going to be less fucked now because two rows of units are going to be able to attack the enemy instead of just one, and it's going to spread out a lot easier. Uh, trading posts. Automatically constructed trading posts now takes 70 seconds to be built up from 60. That's fair. The, the, honestly, like, the, the trading post self-building for 100 wood and 100 food is, like, so good, and I don't mind it being nerfed. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's so I'm ridiculously good. I mean, now you typically build your, your first one. If you're doing, like, a native rush in particular, this really buffs it. So th this just, you know, 
small tweaks to kind of slow the pace of what could be a really unfair native rush. Mm -hmm. Cavalry archer's speed increased to seven. Uh, okay, so they're, they're finally making them faster. Okay. Uh, updated unit visuals to match the portrait and combat values. Spy now uses proper animations for cover in stealth mode. Grandier melee damage increased to 24 from 8. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now inflicts area damage in a radius of 1. Added a multiplier of 0 0.25 against cavalry. Wow! They just made Grenadiers... So, Grenadiers were shit in Legacy, and then they made them broken in DE, and then nerfed them back down to being shit, and now they're potentially broken again. Yep. I don't know how to feel about this. I, I, I All I can say is it'll depend on the attack multipliers, and hopefully none of the you know siege attack and any of that goes into the melee. And it, what it does prevent is skirms from just walking into melee and slaughtering and getting around the range resist of the Grenadier. So you can still kite Grens, assuming they're the same speed. Well, one of the uh, things that I'm thinking about right now is with 24 melee attack, and one area of effects, Grenadiers are do more damage in melee than Hospitallers, and they only do four damage less in melee than Samurai. Uh, but then they also have the Grenadier attack that they have, and range siege options, you know, like... Why would I ever make Samurai or Hospitallers or Doppelsoldners even anymore when Grenadiers are an option, you know? Exactly. It, it's a good, I think it gives options to a really underutilized unit without necessarily breaking it. Uh, the only we'll thing just is have they, to they of course, don't have the cavalry multipliers and they have the heavy infantry tag despite being like counter infantry, basically. Correct. So I think they're going to be a good niche, uh, more common for across more civs since the base stats are good, but not, we'll, we'll see. I, I think it's, you know, worth trying out and worth putting into a build. So I'm going to be making the shit out of these, because Grandiers are pretty tanky too, don't they have like 200 health? Yes, uh, but they are very pop inefficient, especially early on, when they're already so expensive. So it's, Yeah, it's... but they're cheaper than Hospitalkers and cost the same pop, and now they have more attack! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, Jesus, I just realized that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude! <laughs> they're the same pop as Hospitalers! Almost as much HP, way cheaper, and more attack with the same area of effect. So basically, people are like... And then they also oh. have a ranged attack with the grenades. So people are like, buff hospitalities, the devs are like, right, grenadier buffs incoming. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I guess <laughs> hospitaliers are good against cav. These are Yes, these are good against, against buildings and infantry. Dude, I really hope that, like, Malta gets access to the Grenadier at some point so that I can make a Grenadier Hospitaler combo. <laughs> just never get in yeah. melee with me, fucko. <laughs> or, or, or a 2v2, you know, um, just, there's, I think Brits actually have some ways, or no, French now have ways to get, like, uh, you'll see. I don't want to spoil anything okay, more. Okay, you'll okay. see. Unit tooltip and commendum article no longer describe the Grenadier as an artillery unit in order to prevent misconceptions about the applications of upgrades and damage bonus. Okay, cool. Warrior. Uh, warriors are... Uh, these guys are the Minutemen for uh, for Aztec and Native Sins, right? Correct. Uh, hit points reduced to 100 from... Two Oof! Ouch! Range damage reduced to 20 from 26. Bill limit increased to 8 from 6. Okay, I feel like this is a direct nerf to, to Aztecs. Specifically. Uh, you know... Because if Aztecs dropping... would get their Aztecs would get their uh, their warrior priests and then drop a community plaza like in the middle of the map and just spam warriors at you forever. Like this is a direct nerf to that. It feels like. It, correct. You know, if you're an Aztec player and you've done a forward, you know, um, plaza, you know who you are, people. Uh, <laughs> Your, your day of reckoning is here, and this is exactly against, you know, I don't think anyone would consider the Aztecs OP, uh, yeah. but this is what you but would consider is, kind of obnoxious. Yeah, it's, they it, they have some, they're not OP, but Aztecs are really good at defending rushes because of how spammable the warrior is, and now that they're, they are half as tough, even if they have an increased build limit, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder uh, to defend yourself. I hope Aztec actually do get a buff. But this was a, I, I recognize that this was an issue. 
I recognize that this was an issue, even if I do wish that Aztecs would get buffed, you know? Right. I think that's exactly it. And, you know, if you're an Aztec main and you're probably thinking, like, you already have a tough enough time, there are some changes later on. I don't think the Civ's in a better place, per se, but, I, you know, sometimes you got to get rid of the... The problem child. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Design space, air quotes. <laughs> Canoes must now wait three seconds before they can garrison in a dock. Ouch! Oh wait, no canoes. That's not talk about. That's talking about canoes, not not fishing boats. Okay. Larger canoes such as war well, canoes can no longer garrison. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Galleon had a, had a cost decrease. Uh, battle canoe, uh, pretty significant actually. One hundred point. Uh, battle canoe range uh, attack range attack raised to fourteen. Uh, sloop hit points increased to seven hundred and fifty. Uh, what are the, uh, they, they, they didn't affect, um, what are they, uh, the, the, the Malta sloops at all, it looks like. No. Do you about Mexico sloops? Or Malta? Oh, yes. Through the revolt? No, uh, sorry. What, what were, what are the, um, what's the main ship that Malta makes called? Order galleys. They didn't affect order galleys. Order galleys. Right. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, order galleys were kind of expensive, right? They're, they're, you know, caravels with speed, a little bit less HP and promotions. They're, uh, oh, wait. and they heal. No, they're, they're actually pretty cheap, come to think of it. They're like 200 wood, 200 coin. Correct, yes. Yeah, they're cheaper than normal galleons, the, the, the normal stuff. Yeah, the, okay. the sloops were like a bit more expensive, but worst combat stats were like a speed boost. So it's, it's if I remember correct, that might be their steamship actually with the speed boost. Yeah, it just it's, goes it's to USA's, show you how much water. It, it's USA <laughs> that gets the speed boost with the steamer. Okay. Um, the order galleys, they don't have promotions. Uh, they don't have promotions either. They just get the the Malta HP bonus per shipment. No, no, no. They get promotions Do with they? a faster attack speed. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Malta water is you know something to put in the the back of your uh, uh, mind. There, it's deceptively uh, strong. Everyone's going on about Italy's dock boom, but. <laughs> Malta's no cloud ship there in yeah, the high no, seas. I've, believe me, I know that their water boom is good, but I definitely haven't like, played too much water play with them in terms of actual water combat, because people rarely fight me for the water. Yeah. And when they do, I'm just like, okay, have it and over-invest. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, Bolivar, Peru Revolution. Hit point aura no longer affects artillery. Fair, thank you. Uh, revolutionary, Egypt Revolution. Uh, replace revolutionaries with Nizam Fusiliers uh, and Nizam Fusiliers with Kavit Fusiliers, revolutionaries, and bonuses against artillery and siege troopers in stagger mode. Interesting. The, I, I'm, I'm trying to like. E Egypt was a economy focused revolt that only Ottoman can do. Uh, you'll see some of the changes to Ottoman later on. Okay. I think this just brings the just revolt their unit correct. Probably to prevent uh, over buffing of anything. Trek wagons, South Africa revolution. This unit is now classified as ranged cavalry. Okay, so it's countered by skirms now. That, that, that makes them useless. Okay, cool. Yes. Trek wagons were already so, so incredibly niche and now they are useless. Good to know. Right. Uh, are you aware of what Trek Wagons were and did? Uh, a little bit, you know. Um, they were just a and, wagon. They, they were just a mobile building. That's all they are. Could they, like, garrison villagers and run yeah. around? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what they do. Uh, mercenaries. Bosniak. Lance, uh, uh, Lance charge range reduced from two, three range from four, and area effect to two from three. Thank you, Bosniaks were, like, low-key one of the most broken mercenary units in the game. <laughs> Yeah, because they were I, everything yeah. that's amazing about they, they they were everything that's amazing about uh, Chinakos, but boosted to mercenary status. All, right. all, all attack multipliers on the charge attack have been removed. Oh damn, they're really hitting the Bosniak. The melee attack mm. no longer inflicts bonus damage against hand cavalry. Okay, so they turned it from a Chinako into a, into a Naginata. Gotcha. Yeah, it's still incredibly tanky and incredibly strong. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful shipment. More civs did get access to the Bosniak too, so... Yeah, well, like, the, Bo the, the Nakinatas are still an S-tier cav unit. Like, they're no Chinako, but, like, they're goddamn close. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Uh, Fusilier base movement speed reduced to 5 from 5.5. Oh, sad day for the Fusilier fans. Because that was, yeah, like, their big know. selling point was that they're, like, stupid fast. 
Right. I mean, they're just musketeers. They don't have any extra range. I mean, they do nuke cavalry pretty difficult, but or You're, pretty hard. But and it, as it, you know, players can know, it only takes three shots to one cut shot a settler. Right, but they got rid of the you know three fusilier and age two. So I, I'm not really sure if I agree with this or this was needed, but it, it's there and it happened. Kanuri guard population increased to three up from two. Yeah, that makes sense. This was one of the things that I was kind of curious about is Kanuri guard are supposed to be an equivalent of a two pop dragoon, but mercenaries, so they should have been three pop, but they, they were still two pop, which made the Kanuri guard like insanely population effective for for a cat for 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 a, a dragoon mercenary. Correct. Uh, because so. it made them, it, it made me be like Sonata riders. Fuck those, and I love Sonata riders. Uh, Sonata's but, already like the best, like anti cav merc pound for pound, and then they just you know. Yeah. Here's a better one. And yeah, and then there's Kanuri Guard was just insane because they had all the stats of like a dragoon, uh, like a dragoon mercenary instead of a, a javelin mercenary, but with the same pop as the javelin mercenary. And, okay, so this makes sense. Uh, mounted riflemen. Okay, hit points. Ooh, two hundred less HP. Oh, range resistance increased to twenty-five from twenty. Cost reduced to three hundred seventy-five from four hundred. Okay, but all fairness, though, mounted riflemen were broken. Yep, so, absolutely. Uh, this is you unequivocally know, broken. Yep, absolutely agree with this change. Uh, just was not necessary. So this puts them back into line with everything else. Good job, devs. Pandor cost increase to 185 from 170. Okay, I wasn't making Pandors anyways, so I, they're, I, I, I don't they're consider good. them like the best. Like, they're they're okay. But they're not. The best. They do their job. You know what I mean? They're they're basically the Merc version of Shiavone. Uh, they're they're kind of more niche for a mercenary. They're they're correct. one of those niche mercenaries. But, oh boy, do they screw over the goon skirm combo pretty heavily, so. Royal Horseman, stampede damage increased to 10, up from 7. Okay, so the Royal Horseman got a buff. I was always of the opinion that these guys were kind of lame, so that's cool. Yeah, this is drive-by damage up slightly. Uh, Sinar Horseman reduced hit points from one uh, to 1,000 from 1,100. Siege Resistance reduced to 30 from 40. Sinar Horseman. When we talk, when we talk about OP Mercs, like Sinar Horsemen have to be in the discussion because well, you know, they're they're not they're no El Medi or Mamelu, right? Their their stats aren't that high. But what makes them insane is that El Medi and Mamelu are locked to age four, but these guys are available in age three. They're an age three Mamelu is basically what you can treat them as, and it's terrifying. And they just nuke artillery off the planet from a sieve. You know, the African sieves already have access to Colves, and they already have one of the best pop efficient goons in the game. And so this was like Unless basically the counter guns. to Falcon. True. This uh, right yeah, it, 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 truly, the, the Centaur was just overperforming uh, for its option. I believe it was an age up, or no, it was a thousand influence shipment. Um, well, I, I Very... just always trained them whenever I was doing my mercenary builds, and I came across them like, oh, fuck, ignoring everything that I was doing before, I'm making Sino. Yep, a amazing units. Uh, this, again, just brings them back into line with everybody else a bit. They're still yeah. top they're still, tier. They're still going to be insanely good. It's still 1,000 hit points, but it's not 1,100 anymore, you know. <laughs> It's it's minor it's minor changes you know make make the changes small you know I I approve I I, I don't like drastic changes in a game you need to make them small so you can measure how that affects the game balance or more, you know? and then Zanata Riders lost twenty five hit points whatever they're still insane <laughs> all right native units royal abilities reduce the charge times for abilities of several royal houses between eight percent and thirty three percent uh okay so they they made the the big buttons come faster basically yep just a little bit just a little bit okay that's fine because some of them were like oof these take forever right and then you know took forever to really get uh, bonuses so you know nice little buff without uh hopefully breaking any mechanics Kiesel bash cost reduced cool i was thinking that i always thought they were a little expensive i uh, just yeah. bought five wood so it's whatever uh tartar right. archer from the tengri cost reduced again I, I, I thought they were a little expensive uh yeah again minus five wood and then hit points increased to 150 from 140 cool uh all approved 
Corrected the damage multipliers from hand shock infantry to all shock infantry in order for the unit to be able to deal the intended damage to ranged shock infantry. Okay, so Tartar archers now also counter Eagle Runner Knights. Interesting. Uh, Klemeth Rifleman oh. fixed an issue that did not allow the Klemeth Rifleman to gather resources once rescued from Dragon Guardians. Uh, I actually did a little bit of research on like the Klemeth Rifleman like uh, like gather rate. They, they, they can chop wood and gather from berries, right? Uh, and a full batch of five Plymouth Riflemen is equivalent to you getting two extra settlers worth of uh, worth of gathering, basically. Is that for the berry? Because I know their wood gathering speed was really reduced. Yeah, I, I never checked the berry gathering, but I did check the wood gathering. Okay, so for wood, it's good. Because I, yeah, I forget one of them they weren't too impressive with. But again, this is like just a bonus. You know, you already might be building them if they're on the map. Why not get a little bit extra value? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Evzone, House of Fenar, corrected the build XP to 14 from 12. Uh, Somali Dar Darud Militia, reduced range to 22 from 25. Aren't these the skirms that have multipliers against artillery? And boats. I and don't boats. know about artillery, but I believe boats. I, I think they were arts. It was artillery. What a weird fucking unit. They're like, we, have, we are a skirmisher that counters artillery. And also is countered by artillery, and also has less range than artillery. Yeah. <laughs> no so, receives plus one range from the first and second unit upgrade, and plus two range from the legendary upgrade, plus four in general. Okay, so they go to twenty six now. They're still bad. They're still bad. Mm -hmm. Well, they have some niche uses, but it brings those niche uses a bit more in line because again, the insane range, like multipliers or not, just the kiting force that they could do is pretty unpleasant you know again a lot of this is quality of life changes is it changing the balance of the sieve not necessarily but nobody likes being nuked age two by 25 range units that's fair yeah that's fair because uh, like I, I always thought like they're a skirmisher that doesn't have multipliers against heavy infantry but i suppose if you're just using them like super long range musketeers then like yeah i suppose that would work Shock Raider, House of Yagleon, how uh, hand and range resistance both both reduced to ten percent, down from twenty. Thank you. Shock Raiders are broken as fuck. <laughs> yes, it's needed. Yeah, they, they're already solid. They're this a, is just they're a needed. lancer unit that has a from that benefits from promotions, has a charge attack and dual resistances. Like what the fuck? <laughs> yep. Available H two. Available H two. Such a dumb unit. I know. <laughs> Look at Tartar, House of Yagleon. Build limit per training post reduced from 10 down to 14. Thank you! Yep. Okay. The, the, you know, the Tatars really... Uh, again, Age 2 goons are already borderline broken into many matchups. Um, this just puts an already S-tier goon that's already been nerfed from, like, S-plus to merely, you know, A-plus, S to just functional level. So it's not as instant GG if you're, like, Germans. And there's Age 2 machine gun goons running around. Yeah. Red Sea Wagon can now build a commandery for the Maltese civilization. Hey! This'll make the 42 Hospitaller pop that I put as a, that I put as a meme post in Reddit a little easier. Yay! Yeah, you just get quality of life, you know? Why does everybody else get their special camps and war huts okay, and whatnot, right? Th the next thing they need to fix is the stable wagon that you can get on, um... Uh, that you can get on, what is it, Indochina? Uh, or, or Korea. It's, it's Korea. You can get a treasure that has a stable wagon, and it just can't build anything for Malta. <laughs> that is true. But yeah, little things. You know, lots of lots of those in this massive pass. Uh, it, it is a huge fucking patch. Jesus. Uh, we haven't. I feel like we haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes of it yet. No, we we have not. <laughs> uh, Outlaws, Bandito, and charge attack. Now has an area effect of 3, down from 3.5. Range attack multiplier to heavy infantry, increased to 2 from 1.75. They better... Okay, they, they better get the Owl Hoot to, like, match this, because I, I call bullshit if the Owl Hoot isn't also buffed. <laughs> I mean, that's that's fair, you know. Banditos are broken on release, nerfed into the ground. You know, nice little tweak. Oh, no, no, you gotta go back up, because there's a huge thing oh, you I'm, just missed. I'm oh. looking for Owl Hoot. There it is. Okay, uh, there, here we go. I, I was literally just looking for Owl Hoot, and I just ignored everything else. Charge Attack now has a, uh, has a range of 18 up from 12, and the area effects being 2, down from 2.5. Uh, range Attack multiplier against Heavy Infantry increased to 2 from 1.75. Okay, good. They got the Alhuda buff. 
to go with it. Because they thank you. Thank you, game. Okay, Barbary Warrior, Barbary States Revolution, no longer tagged as an outlaw. Thank God. Okay, are you familiar with what made that revolt so broken? No. So there's a tech in your saloon, right, that increases the HP of all outlaw units by 25%. Oh, oh, oh holy stats. fuck, no wonder that was so powerful. Jesus. So, so when you go Barbary, right, you get that automatically for free. You would get uh, like it, your, you different. would get like guard techs essentially for all your revolutionaries. And, and your Barbary Crusaders, and since they're also outlaws, all your Barbary units would then get another 25%, almost Imperial stats, uh, at 12 minutes. With yeah. Rot. Okay. Gotcha. I did that. Okay, that's a huge change then. Yes. Um, some would say dead. Others, like me, would just say, you know, quote unquote, merely, you know, a good revolt. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Comanchero reduced range from uh, sorry, range damage increase to twenty, melee damage increase to nine. Okay, they buff the <laughs> unit that nobody gives a shit about. Cool. Yeah, it's, you know, again, age two goons. Uh, I think they're trying to find a balance of, okay, in a, if they're available age two, they shouldn't be able to wreck the Hussar Musk meta. Right. That's the hope. Okay, Corsair Marksman. Uh, acquired through the Barbary Revolution, Moroccan House, and the Tavern. All, all now share the same stats. Okay, cool. Occupies two population spots up from one. Cost change uh, to they they swapped the food and coin costs. Uh, speed reduced to four point five from five point five. Okay, neat. Gotcha. Uh, you know, puts it into one, so you don't have to remember three different unit stats. Yeah, yeah, that's that's nice. Cowboy bullseye charge attack cooldown increased to sixty. How many times are they gonna nerf the cowboy? As much as it takes, sir. As there, much as it takes. I haven't thought they're broken for like three patches. They're still obnoxious. You know, again, th these are units that like, uh, it may be a treaty thing. It may be, you know, you you'll see underneath it, it's little brother, the Quatero. Um, or Quatero also took a little bit of a nerf. Um, I think what they're trying to do is increase the raw damage but reduce a lot of the, you know, uh, power spike damage, you know, whether it's the area effect or the ch charge abilities. Like it's, again, it's an age two goon in the case of Mexico, age one goon, like, you know, uh, for the sake of the game's balance, I think they're trying to prevent, you know, you just instantly countering Germans unique civ ability. You know, with, um, their range damage at 20 and then the charged at 30, and then with the 60 second cooldown, the Cowboys charge in action is now officially worse than the Hospitallers. Mm -hmm. Because the Hospitallers has the same cooldown of 60 seconds, but it has 40 as its damage instead of 30. And uh, sure. uh, with the same base damage of 20. This, this is true. Although, again, the Hospitaller does not run around on a horse. <laughs> yeah. That's more so me asking for them to further buff the Hospitaller one. Right. <laughs> okay. Because they don't get it until age four, and it's not that much better than the Cowboys. Well, before you call, you'll see. You'll see okay. what they did to Malta. Quattrero. Uh, charge attack area of effect reduced from two, to two from three. Uh, yeah, and they changed the... the, 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 the yeah, okay, cool. Desert Raider. Uh, these are the cavalry that do siege damage, yes? Oh, yes. Uh, range damage resistance reduced to 20 from 30, and melee siege damage reduced uh, to 26 from 30. Okay, cool. Big nerf yeah. there. Yep. This was a card that uh, initially I think you and I both kind of slept on. Um, Gideon, uh, of course, made a point to kind of convince me otherwise. And I, I will admit, the, these were incredibly nasty into a lot of matchup and civs. This just brings them from basically a mounted grenadier of sorts to a much more in line with other hussar and ranged cav so yeah, yeah. It, it, a healthy change again you know maybe not op before but definitely a lot less like toxic okay hajuk uh these guys are outlaws on, on some of the new european maps if i'm not mistaken right they're uh are skirms the hajuk yes is a skirm. Range damage increased to, to 14 from 13.5. Why would you make base damage numbers decimal points? That's such a bad idea. 
<laughs> multiplier against heavy infantry increased to 1.5 from 1.34. Like, multipliers can be decimal points because we can see those in the UI, but don't make base damage numbers decimal points, please. Yeah, that, that could have been a thing left over too, and just you get quality of life. Now everyone's life for computing. Yeah, yeah they fixed it. That's what's important. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Melee attack updated to have the same damage and multipliers as the ranged attack. Cool. Uh, improves the firing animation to allow kiting. Okay, the Hajuk are really good now. Got it. They were already, like, pretty decent. Now they're really good. Uh, highwaymen. These are Dragoons, right? I've almost never encountered anybody training Highwaymen. Yep. Um, this just kind of, again, gives them a little bit of love. Uh, they were definitely not too strong although they had a you know again a few instances they were pretty strong um just you know it's an option it's not a, a handicap if you take them now okay cool uh yeah population reduced to four from five bank that that's why nobody trained them right there <laughs> resistance to the highway flips to range instead of me uh, and uh dismounted to melee okay so they mount and dismount correct mounted speed was seven point oh they were fast Damage increased to 16 from 12. May a damage multiplier against shock. Okay, cool. Lots of cool, lots of cool stuff. Honestly, the highwaymen were pretty cool units. Shame nobody ever made them. Maybe they will now, right? Yep. All right, Inquisitor is now classified as a siege trooper and no longer counters cavalry to enable early counterplay with militia and cavalry. <laughs> siege attack increased to 22, and speed reduced to 4.5. Wow. Okay, we did it. One of my strategies caused the devs to nerf Inquisitors. <laughs> we did it. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> that That is a direct... I'm surprised they didn't just say something like, you know, now Yulons won't be able to utilize them or shit, because... <laughs> oh you're, my you, god. You've been I, I am immortalized. Directly nerfed and, you know, I obviously am you immortalized that video somewhere. I am so proud of this. They directly nerfed me. <laughs> yeah i mean to be honest though these things were nuts just they right were, off the gate like were. uh siege damaging spy halberdier and, fast and siege attack when they changed them they only they they only like nerfed the priests and then the inquisitors were stronger than ever before yeah <laughs> yeah Th this is you know uh again this was They're probably not good but like now cavalry and militia are the kind Especially, you know, because you could use them to sit around, like, the town centers, you know, like you were doing your strategy. Like, now militiamen will nuke them pretty hard since they're siege troopers. Although, they, their, their siege attack speed is now 20. Their siege attack is now 22, and their siege speed is still 1.5. So, they've had almost, they have almost double the siege they had before now. They have, like, 44 siege and 3 speed now. Uh, which is pretty crazy. Um... Like, it w w w which is, like, really crazy, actually. Like, they're they're going to melt buildings faster than ever, but now they have some serious counters. Correct. And, and again, uh, just good like kind this, of bringing stuff in line with everything else. Because their, their melee speed is, their siege attack speed is 1.5 instead of 3, so this right here, this is a 20 damage buff to them. Yep. It went, they went from 40, 24 to 44 damage in, in you know, 2 seconds. With the speed reduction too, like that affects a lot of other buffs. So you yeah. know the, the, they now don't scale as insanely. It's well, no, they 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 took away the speed bonus from uh, they, they they took away the speed bonus from uh, what is it? They they took away the speed bonus from patriarchy, right? No, not patriarchy. Uh, fervor, fervor mission, mission fervor. Yeah. Uh, so like they were always just kind of stuck at five, but. Right, and now, well, they're stuck military at four, drummers. now they're stuck at 4.5. So n now with military drummers, they'd be 4.95 yeah. max, yeah. plus whatever other bonuses come out. Pirate. The pirate has been reworked into a shock infantry outlaw. That's cool. I wonder if this also applies to the converted pirates. Um, Maybe. I think this is also maybe to help Haiti, or Haiti out, because Haiti is you know, probably one of the worst revolts in the game, or just things to do. Oh, they're actually really good shock infantry, too. They have far more... They have, like, 25 more HP than uh, Coyote Runners, but, like, the same attack. Yes. 
And so, 20% good. range res instead of 10. These are good out these are good shock infantry. I might want to make a build around these. True, sure, I know you know, I think the pop space is still gonna be high, but you know, there's ways to get around that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they sh yeah, they're, 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 you just sh send your, like, outlaw ship until it lowers outlaw upon. No biggie. Alright, Renegade, man, this is gonna be a really big change to outlaws. Like, so many outlaw tra strategies are gonna come out of this now. Uh, Renegado got buffed. Okay, so yeah, all of the outlaw skirms are being buffed so that they have higher multiplier against heavy infantry. Which is cool, because that was their big issue, was that they sucked at fighting heavy infantry, despite that being what they were supposed to be for, you know. And, and so pop effective, or uh, inefficient to begin with, so, yeah. you know. Woku Monk, d range damage increased to 20 from 13, oh my god. <laughs> and the attack multipliers changed to 1.25 against heavy infantry, 2 times against light, 1.5 against villagers, 0.5 against cavalry. Cool. Okay, neat. Yeah, this is kind of helps too, because remember, the Asian civs are locked into these, so... Mm -hmm. Wait, um, no, they're, uh, no, they're not. I'm pretty sure that they... Uh... Nope. Oh, they okay. don't get normal they outlaws. Are they? Correct. Okay, okay, got it. Oh, right, I remember that. Yeah, okay. I, I, I found that out when I was trying to like, figure out which civilization was best at uh, Inquisitor strats. Uh, Correct. Because I, I, I was considering Japan for a while, uh, but then I realized that they couldn't make them because they were locked. So you're totally right. Woku War Horseman, uh, resistance change for 20%. Uh, 230, uh, 20% range to 30% melee, and attack increased to 18 from 12. Uh, or train time reduced to 40 from 70? Oh my god! <laughs> that would have been rough. Okay, so, yeah, yeah like, uh, I, I, I get the picture. Like, mercenaries is now possible for Asian Sims. And then yep, the, the Wuku Pirate has been reworked into a shock infantry outlaw that's. Uh, Squishier, but more damage. It's very comparable to the Chibi Runner. Got it. And it has a melee multiplier against villagers. What the fuck? Wait, does the pirate have that? No, he doesn't. Oh my god. No, the, the Woku stuff, you know, it's supposed to represent their real life historical uh, terror that they were in uh, East Asia. Bro, so, this guy's got 30 attack at 1.5 speed against villagers as a shock infantry unit. That's so good. It is. And it gives, you know, uh, civs like. God, Japan or China, which we know dead. No, you guys can't see me rolling my eyes here, but no ways to harass villagers before. Uh, just another tool in the arsenal. Uh, I would imagine India as well might really benefit from this. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I would love to try to make like an India outlaw strategy. That would be really fun. <laughs> Woku Ronin. Population increased to 4 from 3. Siege so attack increased to 35 from 60. Wait, what? That's not they, they're increase. just bringing them in line with the rest of the samurai. Wait, but that, that's uh, not an increase. Oh, wait, no, from 35 to 60, okay. Because mm -hmm. it's so weird, because it's an increase to 4 from 3, and then increase from 35 to 60. It, it, they swapped it around, and it, yeah, it's okay. Oh my god, that's a lot of siege, though. Uh, inflicts 2 times bonus against cavalry. Okay, so yeah, they're turning it into samurai. Uh, fencing school now also increases shock infantry training speed. Oh, cool! I like that. Uh, reducing water booms uh, a bit, but then adding more cards. They did uh, okay. remove some of the British water booms too. Okay, yeah, let's, let's, well, I, I haven't really read these yet, but fish market, fish market times two rendering plant. Whale gather rate reduced by five percent for each card. Okay, that's I suppose that's fair. Uh, team coastal defenses. All European civilizations now have access to this card. Cool. Uh, advanced dock healing rate for ships reduced to 85% from 100. Uh, naval gunners added to French, Swedish, and Russian home cities. I guess that's okay. So that's just a ship buff card. Offshore support removed from British and Italian home cities added to German home cities. Uh, doesn't that give um, ships a multiplier against buildings? I believe so. I believe it gives them a little bit of. Uh, I can check really fast while you continue. Okay. Uh, well, that, that's it in terms of like the the, the, the water cards, at least okay. ones that we're seeing. Yeah. And higher Irish brigadiers reduce the amount to nine from eleven in age two. Very cool. Oh, it, was, it was range, uh, by the way. The offshore support uh, added range to ships, and then the fifteen percent damage. 
Gotcha. Uh, Assassins now unlocks a charged rifle attack that can only be used against heroes and mercenaries. Assassins wield swords instead of knives. Uh, and then Agents now unlocks a charged pistol attack with lower damage bonus that recharges more slowly. Yes. Uh, agents uh, wear a slightly fancier coat. <laughs> now, now, what's really cool is, okay, since the game has been out, basically, or at least since uh, War Chiefs, Assassin's card and Agent's card has always had a pistol. Yeah. And for some, and finally, after all this time, the devs have been, okay, fine, you get a charge attack. Does this change their use massively? Uh, it will for Portugal. Everybody else, I think it keeps, you know, the same amount, although with more access to mercs, you are incentivized to bring in uh, these units. So this is kind of a nice little buff that may round out a change to the meta. I've actually always been like one of the few people who carries agents in my deck. It's just in case I run into a Sweden player who's like, okay, now we're going full Jaegers, you know? Oh. Uh, and it's it's nice to uh, to get an extra charge attack that goes with that now. Correct. And defense. So kill. assassins get a super anti-hero attack, and then agents get a range attack uh, that that uh, with lower damage bonus that recharges more quickly. Very cool. I think. Well, what's nice too is it has no negative multipliers either. So. Gotcha. It's like a 12, 16 second uh, recharge oh, that's for like fast. twenty. Yeah, it's it's actually there's some raiding potential. I think uh, we'll we'll wait till we get to Portugal. Get Rosario dragoons from the Romanian Revolution cannot be sent twice. Uh, Chile Revolution added advanced stock, advanced trading post, capitalism, fish market liberation. Oh my God, they added a lot of to the, those ship shipments to this. Right, because people just loved being hussard of death, so they uh, added even more options for <laughs> Chile. Uh, South Africa Revolution added extensive fortifications, land grab, pioneers, ranching, stonemasons, town militia, two bank wagons, and two cover wagons. To oh my god. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh yeah. Industrial Revolution removed. That was the, the, the extra factory you got, right? So they made it so uh, that correct. Yeah, so they made it so South Africa um, no longer gets three factories, but they instead get like all of this. Yeah, it'll be interesting too. Branch to see, of land you know, crab, pioneers, wagon. ranching, and stonemasons are probably not going to be sent. Well, and then the question is: Does two be bank like wagons add fortification? Oh no, bank, two bank wagons is worse than than uh, than one factory by far. Right. Not even a comparison. Well, unless it added the uh, total amount you could build, like some of the town center cards do. Two covered wagons is pretty interesting. though. All right, technologies ransom. Uh, so this is the one that allows you to just buy back your 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 um, your explorer, right? Cost no longer increases by fifty with the knighthood and peerage upgrades. Now has a ninety second cooldown. Ooh, no more spamming. G explorers, Jesus Christ. Okay. Yep. That makes uh, that's honestly like a slight buff to Aztec because then they're like, hey, we're like the only people who can get their explorer back in ten seconds. Uh, that is, and I think that's a pretty because you know. <sighs> Mainly saw it at higher level play, but using the Explorer to constantly snare and tank um, can be a bit obnoxious. I mean, when you think about the yeah, that's cost... like meta for Aztecs, right? And so it lets Aztecs be unique, and it kind of you know it, it sucks when you're getting spammed to death by just one dude swinging a sword and then quoting Shakespeare <laughs> as he goes down. So qual quality of life mostly. I don't think it changes the meta that much. Could be wrong. Cree tanning for Cree case. This is most. This is uh, affecting USA. Then unit hit point improvement reduced to five percent from ten. Wow, wow, yeah, whatever. Uh, I, I I was never super big on that to begin with. Yeah. Uh, royal tax bourbon royal house no longer grants coin for tribal marketplaces. Fixed outdated tooltip. Cool. That's the one that gives you coin for every building you have. Uh, makes sense that it, it shouldn't affect tribal marketplaces since they don't cost any wood to build. Uh, Aztec chocolate recipes, Aztec minor civilization. Now if corrected ships one crate a coin for every two minutes of game time. Is this something that's only effect, like available on unknown? Because I thought the Aztec minor civ was removed from the game normally. I believe so. so um, this is an unknown only thing, gotcha. Correct, maybe or some weird alliance thing or something. The gentleman pirates. I don't know who has the ship. 
Um, I think a lot of navally focused civs do. Um, it is an option. Ned delivers one privateer and 300 coin instead of one privateer and two barrier corsairs. Okay, that's way more useful. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a politician, isn't it? Correct. Okay, gotcha. That makes more sense. The Admiral of the Ocean, H2 to H3, uh, now delivers one caravel galley and 300 wood, down from 400. Maltese received one order galley and 200 wood, down from 300. Nobody sent this anyways. It's there, though. I mean, actually, there's a few times for 400 wood I would send it as, like, Portugal or something, but... Okay. Uh, it's... it's I don't know if it's really OP, but it's definitely a tweak. Uh, Chalet Revolution now grants 8 Hussars of Death down from 10. Cool. Oh, thank God. Cool. Okay. Alright. Continued in Part 2, where we go over the rest of the update, including all of the civilization balance changes. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was, as ever, a ton of fun to make. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please do consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out, and have a great day.